Yeah, this is new time on Silk Way TV channel. We introduce you with the most visible news and important events that happen throughout this week in Kazakhstan and Central Asia. More details on politics, economy, social and cultural life with opinions from the most recognizable experts of Kazakhstan and world. I'm Anuri Mangali and this is what you'll see today. A meeting of the Supreme Eurasian Council with the participation of the leaders of the member states was held in Russian capital. What were the main political messages of the event? Kazakhstan and Uzbekistan are working closely on creating a special Central Asian touristic route. New time, knew the details from Uzbek officials. The singer who promotes Kazakh national folklore worldwide. Darren Isagulov interviewed Palina Hanim, who performs in 11 languages. And let's start with the main news of this week, a meeting of the Supreme Eurasian Council with the participation of the heads of the member states of the EAEU was held in Moscow. The agenda included a wide range of issues, including food security, digitalization and labor migration. President of Kazakhstan also voiced some significant proposals. More details in our next report. This year marks the 10th anniversary of the formation of the Eurasian Economic Union, which has become a significant player in the global trade arena. Evidence of this is the annual growth in trade turnover between member states, as well as with partner countries and other international organizations. In a relatively short period of time, this union has transformed into important and promising integration association in the international space. Through joint efforts, more than a thousand various regulatory documents were adopted. Cooperation within the Eurasian Economic Union contributes to the progressive development of Kazakhstan's economy. Last year alone, the country's GDP grew by 5.1 percent. We view it as a good result. President emphasized huge potential of the union. All the participants participants pointed on issues such as food security of the Union member countries, the energy market, common transportation, logistic routes and digitalization. The head of state also outlined tasks for this year. First and foremost, it's about fully implementing the fundamental principle of the economic union, the freedom of movement of goods. We need to create a truly unified and systematically functioning barrier-free internal market. It's important to completely eliminate the practice of hidden restrictions, point decisions and any kind of manual control. I think this should become an unconditional priority for the work of Eurasian Economic Council. Besides the freedom of movement of goods, there are three other points that are intended to contribute to the development of the economies of the EAEU countries. These include the free movement of capital, services and labor. All of them were outlined and later approved by the Supreme Eurasian Economic Council. Kazakhstan trade turnover with the member countries of a union increased by 1.7 times, reaching 28.5 billion US dollars, while exports more than doubled. And these are not just numbers, behind them are hundreds of enterprises, agreements reached between them, thousands of jobs, stable income for businesses and new markets, and perhaps most importantly open borders. The president of Kazakhstan also called on colleagues to develop e-commerce with the artificial intelligence technologies. Yet he still outlined the importance of transportation as a crucial aspect. Without communication routes, any trade is reduced to zero. Daurian Sagulov, Bakhtiar Darkeev, Raimbek Begujaev, Ashat Azrithanov, New Time. Kasim Jomar Tokayev congratulated people of Kazakhstan on the Defender of the Fatherland Day. It is Kazakh national holiday and a day off which is celebrated annually on May 7th. It was on this date in 1992 that the decree of the establishment of the National Armed Forces of Independent Kazakhstan was signed. The head of state highlighted that this holiday is of great importance for strengthening the values of peace in our country. He stressed that army is a guarantor of the country's sovereignty, solid backbone of the nationhood. The state flag of Kazakhstan was solemnly raised on the Golan Heights. This historic event took place in honor of the Defender of the Fatherland Day and the formation of the armed forces of the country. Currently, 139 Kazakh military personnel are carrying out their mission at the Fawar peacekeeping base. They were deployed there in March of this year. The Kazakh peacekeeping contingent patrols the area of responsibility, performs tasks related to protection, reinforcement of checkpoints and demining of explosives 
exclusive objects in this region of the Middle East. A mandate to carry out an independent peacekeeping mission was granted to Kazakhstan by the United Nations in January this year. On May 9th, Kasim Jumar Tokayev congratulated the people of Kazakhstan on Victory Day. He outlined that our country made a significant contribution to the common victory in the World War II. The head of state said that these heroic acts of our people serve as an example of incredible courage and true patriotism, and thanks to their bravery, we can live and look forward to the future. The president also noted the significance of this day as a reminder of the importance of strengthening peace. Let me tell you that during the World War II, according to official data, 1.2 million Kazakhs were called up into the Red Army. More than 600,000 of them never returned home. And the president of Kazakhstan took part in the rest lane ceremony at the Otan Ana Monument. The head of state and those gathered at the event, including war veterans and citizens, honored the memory of Kazakh soldiers with a minute of silence. The leadership of the state also paid tribute to the memory of the heroes. Chairperson of the Senate of the Kazakh Parliament, Maulena Shimbaev, the chairman of the Majlis of the Parliament, Irland Koshanov, the Prime Minister Oldras Biktenov, the head of the president's executive office, Saibek Dadibayev and the state councillor Yerlan Karin, all of them laid flowers at the monument to the Kazakh heroes of the war and honored their memory. And let's move on to some other news topics. For the first time in its history, the French media development agency Canal France International hosted its inaugural regional forum in Tashkent, gathering over 150 journalists from France, Kazakhstan, Uzbekistan, Kyrgyz Republic and Tajikistan. Over the course of three days, the sessions addressed the main issues facing modern journalism in Central Asia. The agenda included topics of combating disinformation, journalistic ethics, media education, modern challenges of journalism and cooperation between French and Central Asian media. Uzbekistan is expected to host over 2.5 million tourists from Kazakhstan. Besides of that, countries are developing the joint travel route, one tour whole region, with over 50 destinations in two states to attract more visitors from other parts of the world, said Ambassador of Uzbekistan to Kazakhstan, Saeed Ikram Niyaz Hojaev. Our reporter Baljan Semigulina visited Tashkent and talked to tourism officials from the neighboring country. Kazakhstan and Uzbekistan to develop a joint tourism route with 50 points in several cities of the two countries. This, by assumptions of tourist experts, will increase the volume in tourism between the two countries and attract foreigners from other regions. I'm a tour operator and our direct responsibility is to showcase our country to foreign citizens. However, we are happy to not only showcase our own country, but also our neighboring countries, because people from abroad want to see everything at once. They find it very interesting and enjoyable when they can see how similar yet different we are along one route. Our cultures run side by side, yet each is unique and distinctive. Notably, one tour whole region initiative was first proposed by the president of Uzbekistan, Shafkat Mirziyoyev, at a meeting of Central Asian leaders in Avaza back in 2021 to enhance tourism exchange within the region. A roadmap for tourism industry development has been agreed upon by tourism ministries with joint implementation underway. The number of Kazakh tourists visited Uzbekistan last year reached 1.3 million people. However, this year, by common endeavors, it is expected to increase the volume up to 2.3 million people. I believe this project will enable us to attract tourists from third countries to our region. We've created a cluster where when someone visits Uzbekistan or Kazakhstan, they can explore the entire region as a whole. Moreover, our countries have historical ties. Additionally, we see an annual increase in tourists by 20 percent. This year, we're collaborating with tourism companies to attract tourists from Kazakhstan. We expect over 2.5 million tourists. Uzbekistan has many historical sites directly related to the Kazakh ethnicity. The mandatory program of one tour whole region includes cities of historical importance in Uzbekistan, Tashkent, Samarkand, Bukhara, as well as cities of Kazakhstan, Almaty, Shimkian and Astana. However, according to Firuz Dodiv, advisor to chairman of tourism committee of Uzbekistan, the parties are always working on expanding the 
the program. And now we're discussing other, uh, let's say, additional new routes like, uh, like, like Moenak, uh, like, like Kiva, Nukus, then Aktau, or, 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 or Turkestan then Fergana Valley. So additional routes are being discussed between us. Last year we have hosted uh, around like 1.3 uh, million visitors from Kazakhstan, among which 20% are those who are going by, uh, as, uh, who are going as a, as a tr pilgrim tr tourists, which means uh, who are visiting such uh, holy places. And it's quite a big number. Thus, the countries combine the strength of travel possibilities of both countries, including ethno, gastro, ecological and extreme types of tourism. The current objective is to fully recover the pre-pandemic tourist influx, and it's expected that by the end of this year, the goal will be accomplished. Paljan Samigulina, Silkway TV Channel, Tashkent. Since 2019, the Uzbek government made major activities on planting saxaul trees on the dried bottom of Aral Sea. Now, the country has planted the seeds on the area of 2 million hectares, said Deputy Minister of Ecology, Environmental Protection and Climate Change of Uzbekistan, Rusubek Kazbekov, in an exclusive commentary to New Time in Tashkent. It is worth mentioning that Aral Sea crisis zone directly covers the territories of Kazakhstan, Uzbekistan, Turkmenistan, as well as indirectly Tajikistan. Kazakhstan and Kyrgyz Republic. And now, according to Mr. Kazbekov, to battle with climate change challenges, countries are proposing to create a joint regional environmental proposal review for the water monitoring between the states. Uh, until now, we had like uh, individual country environment performance reviews mm -hmm. done every uh, like uh, decade. So uh, now we are proposing that uh, we should have a, like a one general uh, kind of regional uh, environment performance review because mm -hmm. because we are interconnected yeah we we, we, we cannot act uh, uh, individually and also uh, in terms of uh, uh, water quality monitoring we want to also invite other uh, riparian countries like uh, Kyrgyzstan or Tajikistan mm -hmm. and also maybe uh, uh, replicate or upscale the Sardaria experience with our Kazakh partners Kazakhstan, for the first time commissioned by the Ministry of Culture and Information, presented the works of seven prominent artists at the 60th Biennale in Venice, Italy. The theme of the Kazakh pavilion at the Biennale is Zheryuk, Journey Beyond the Horizon. We asked the curator of the Kazakh pavilion about the meaning of the theme Zheryuk and the works of the Kazakh artists. Please watch the fragment of the interview right now. Please tell us more about our Kazakh pavilion at the Biennale. Yes, of course. Our theme is Utopia, a look beyond the horizon. We focused on a legend that dates back to the 15th century, to such a quasi-historical hero, the character as Hassan Kaiha. Hassan Kaiha was a philosopher of the steppe, an advisor to the Counts Janibek and Kirei. The main narrative tells the legend that Hassan Kaiha was searching for the promised land throughout his life. We use this narrative as a framework, that is, as a metaphor to depict this particular story. But there are exactly four directions here. There are futurism, cosmism, utopianism and spiritualism. We did a lot of research, established a chronology starting from the earliest images, from the 80s to the present days. Each generation, decade by decade, we look at the key works that could form part of such a conventional ontology of the new movement associated with futurism. The special issue of the Reporter with President program with all interesting details and exclusive interviews from the Biennale Arte 2024 in Venice is available on our YouTube channel. And let us end this week on a musical note. Singer from Astana, Polina Hanim, is promoting Kazakh folk music among foreign audiences. Polina admits that singing the best Kazakh songs in French or translating soulful Brazilian compositions into Kazakh is her own special form of diplomacy. The singer performs in 11 languages and effortlessly blends the colors of different cultures. But for her, the music of her homeland comes first. What musical diplomacy is and why music is the most unique universal language of communication. Please watch an interview with Polina Hanim right now. Hello, 
Hanem here. My name is Polina Hanem, and I'm an independent artist, singer, and musician. I perform songs in 11 languages Kazakh, Russian, English, Portuguese, Spanish, Italian, French, Arabic, Ukrainian, Polish, and I think that's all. I can't say it was a conscious strategic decision to sing in different languages, to deliver music of different cultures. It just happened organically. And now, looking back, I feel like there is a certain significance to it. I think it's largely connected to my background, to where I come from. I'm ethnically Russian, born and raised in Kazakhstan. Here we are surrounded by a truly diverse cultural environment. Everything is mixed up. Kazakhs, Russians, Ukrainians, Poles, Germans. It's all blended together, and I feel like it's resonated with some inner need within me. I don't struggle when combining music and languages from different cultures. It all happens quite naturally. You know, at some point I realized, oh, here I am actually playing this Kazakh folk song, and it turns out I'm doing it in the traditions of some American folk. I think I performed my first traditional Kazakh folk song in school, probably in the 7th or 8th grade. As far as I can remember, it was the song Kuzumdan Karasa by the great Abai. Back then, of course, I performed it purely technically. It was during the Abai song competition. My teacher told me, since you play the guitar, learn this song. So I learned it and sang it. I even received some prizes. Well, firstly, what can you expect from a teenager? What level of awareness or depth of feeling can they have about any song? And my attitude toward this song changes with each passing year. I became interested in its historical context. Who was the author of this song? What's its significance? Then I began to notice how people reacted to this song. And I realized that it's one of the most beloved songs in Kazakhstan. It is a folk song, and behind such songs lie time and history. Once I was talking to an American, and he shared his knowledge on American folk songs. I was surprised to discover that the themes in their songs are exactly the same as in Kazakh folk music. It's all about nature, admiration for the beauty of nature. In 2019, my album Française à la Kazakh was released. In this album, five Kazakh songs were translated into French. Honestly, it's hard to remember exactly how the idea came about. Perhaps the idea arose when we asked ourselves, is it possible to do this? Can we try? Looking back, I'm very surprised that we succeeded. It's actually a form of musical diplomacy. <laughs> Я, наверное, приведу пример. Я играю бразильский музыку. You know, I'll give you an example. I've been playing for over 10 years, and at the beginning of last year I was lucky enough to visit Brazil, and I had a very strange feeling. On one hand, it's a country that's incredibly far from Kazakhstan, and it's a completely different culture. But I had this feeling as if I knew all these names, as if I knew some peculiarities of their mentality and culture. But how do I know this? Thanks to songs, thanks to music. I think this is the perfect example of musical diplomacy, where through music we can learn more about other people and other cultures and become more tolerant. The same thing is happening now because of Dimash, when people from other parts of the world start singing Kazakh songs, start learning the Kazakh language and show interest in our country. It's a perfect example of musical diplomacy.
that's it for today. All the main news about Kazakhstan and Central Asia you can find here. More special projects about our country you can also watch on Silkway TV channel. So stay tuned and see you next week.